Hi friends, thank you for joining us for our continuing series of Stories from the Field. Today I want to take you with me to Romania in the continent of Europe across the way to hear the story of Janelle and Felipe Silva. In partnership with the New Horizons Foundation, Felipe and Janelle work with Roma youth in the Zhu Valley to build trust, perseverance, character, and courage through rock climbing. And in this town where poverty forces many parents to move away for work, this ministry provides youth in the neighborhood of Dallas, Romania, an environment where they can experience safety and respect, they can develop life skills, pursue education, and most importantly, they can come to know the love of Christ. The Silvas are also planting a church right now in Dallas, Romania. There are so many exciting things happening there. Will you take a moment today and listen to what the Silvas might have to offer you? May God bless you all. Thank you for joining us. Hello to our supporting churches and our supporters. We um, want to thank you guys for keeping us in your prayers during this time and let you know that we have also been praying for you, um, for everyone across the globe, Christians, as we find ourselves in a unique situation, um, having to adapt to some difficult times and having the opportunity to reach out to a lot of people who are struggling during these times. Um, yeah, so together with Felipe and our kids, Luca, Sofia, and Mila, we're here in Romania. We um, closed the rock climbing gym the same time the government closed the schools here in Romania. So that was the beginning of March. So it's been already two and a half months. Um, yeah, it's been a long time to be away from the kids from the gym. We're keeping in contact a bit online, but that's about it. Um, so we're looking forward eagerly to the time we can open again. But we want to share with you some of the ways that God gave us opportunities to minister to our physical neighbors during this time when our ministry was technically closed. So we have a beautiful house here in Romania and our fence is um, pretty see-through. So we actually live quite close to each of our neighbors. We're able to see them. We see each other's interactions throughout the day. We talk with each other. We have a really good relationship with each of them, which has been really nice. Um, and so during this time, since we were all home and staying home, we saw a lot more of each other. So obviously we had the chance to engage with each of them um, in a more yeah, deep way. And so we began to pray, Felipe and I, that God would give us the opportunity to really focus this time on um, continuing to talk with them about our lives, about God, about their lives, um, letting them know that we're praying for them and that we're here to help if they have any needs. So it was really good. We were able to help one neighbor financially as they struggled quite a bit through this time. They were laid off. They're two brothers, two single brothers. Um, and then we were also able on Friday when our um, country went from a state of emergency back down to a state of alert, we were able to hold a worship service here in our yard so that we were all outdoors and far enough apart to meet the requirements. And so we invited them to come to that and they all came, all four of them. So that was a really happy celebration that we were able to, yeah, to welcome them to our community of faith and that they were excited to come, that they came, and that we could sort of break some of the social distancing that's been happening for a long time that kept a lot of us lonely and longing for community and um, worship together here this past Sunday. So we're very thankful for that opportunity. Um, another thing that was unique to us during this time of coronavirus that we see God's hand in the timing um, perfectly, of course, as God's timing always is, is that we had a couple who was homeless um, come to live with us. So this was at the end of February, right before the coronavirus. So Pardelian and Carolina, Carolina was seven and a half months pregnant at that time. Um, they asked if they could stay with us for a while as they had nowhere to live. And so we have a little room down in the bottom of our yard. It's like a summer home, um, a summer room let's say, with a bathroom and some water, um, running water. So they stayed, moved in with us at that time. And that has been um, a challenge, but it's also been a blessing um, for each of us to learn to live together in the same small space. Um, but because of the coronavirus, we had a lot more time where we were able to be with them. They, um, Carolina and Pardelian, 
are very loving people that we've enjoyed having here. They both have disabilities, so there's a lot of things that they need help doing. They're not able to read or to write. Um, Carolina suffered a lot of trauma, and so we were able to help them with some of these simple tasks. Um, and because they were right here with us living in our yard, we were able also to engage with them throughout the coronavirus, a time when we weren't able to see many other people. So yeah, the Lord was faithful to us and to them to help um, their daughter, Ana Maria, be born in the end of March, and then to be able to help them with some of their paperwork and to be able to get some welfare, some money so they can have an income, um, as well as some help for Ana Maria because it was very difficult for them at the beginning when she was first born with simple things like feeding and bathing. And so we were able to be with them through that, which was really neat. And Pardi helped us a lot around our yard during that time. So he was also very eager to help us and to, um, yeah, to love us back, I think, for a lot of the love that he received from us, which was really the love of Christ in our hearts and in our lives. Um, and then a third neighbor, he um, was so intrigued with the way that we took Pardelian and Carolina in because he could see, he sees them, you know, daily, some of the things that they do. And sometimes Carolina will have outbursts of um, anger and crying and whatnot. And so he was very surprised to see us continuing to take care of them and welcome them here in our yard when he could see that some days were really quite difficult. And so he came and he asked us, he was talking to us, he's like, what are you guys doing? And I can't believe this. And just try to explain to me like what is happening here. So it was a really cool opportunity where we got to share with him that only by Christ's strength are we able to do this. And that's why we received them into our home because we believe that if we had a space for them, that that's what we should do with it if there was a need. Um, and we were able to explain a little bit about her situation in terms of her emotional past and trauma and so he actually was able to see her in a whole new light um, and he was like that's amazing that you guys didn't judge her that you haven't judged them but instead you try to understand their situation and so we were able to tell him you know that too that's from the bible and we believe in the bible and, and God tells us there to be slow to judge to not judge someone else but to continue to offer mercy and love even if they wrong us um, so he was so surprised by that and he thought that that was just something that he hadn't really heard before he said and then just two days later he actually came he came by the street to our front door and he um, gave me a whole huge bag of potatoes and asked me to please give them to Carolina because he wanted to help them as well and give them some food so that was such an encouragement to me um, just to yeah have the opportunity to share with him what God did through us and that was sometimes difficult but we felt God saying keep continue persevere it's not you who's doing it, it's me it's my strength lean on me and this will also be an example to your neighbors and to the people around you of how to be my hands and my feet um, and it was a unique time to be able to do that since the coronavirus obviously was not allowing us to see many people and so God I think really brought them here to us for this time now we're hoping to help them find somewhere to live in the near future um, yeah so that was just an encouragement for us during this time to really love our neighbors that were right here right beside us that we saw more often because we were home and a scripture that God brought to us that he put in our hearts during this time was from Psalm 68 where he says um, I put the solitary in homes Another translation is he brings the lonely into families. So we just felt like that was really beautiful um, times that we could be able to help people who were quite lonely and who we saw God wanted to say to them, I am for you, I am with you, I care about you, I love you, and I will put you with my people so that you have community and that you see examples of my love, my grace, my mercy, my kindness, my compassion, and that you'll be pointed to me um, through this time so that God will be glorified. So we pray that he is glorified through all these things um, to Carolina and Pardi as well as to our neighbors. And we also encourage you in whatever way possible. I know it's difficult in this time, but pray that the Holy Spirit will show you ways to be creative. Reach out to those who are lonely. Um, and if you are lonely, know that Christ does love you. He is um, caring for you and he will find his people of faith to reach out to you and take care of you as well.